So you get the win um, in the second of the two back-to-back -back games. How difficult is, is it to get wins in this kind of situation? Nick, we're, we're going through the process that everybody in the conference is going through right now, and that's having to play back-to-back. -back. Uh, that's different on everybody. Nobody's ever done that before. Um, and so uh, that's pretty tough to do. The teams that are the most returners, probably the teams that are deep uh, in players uh, that can play eight, nine, ten people, uh, they're going to benefit in the early going while everybody else kind of gets a feel for who they are and, and who's going to get the, the amount of playing time. So back-to-back -back days is just really, really tough, you know, and – People now you can go and you can adjust, uh, make your uh, break down your game from the that day before that night and the next morning, have your teams ready to go, and yet you don't really have enough time to make tr a tremendous amount of adjustments on the other side. So it's almost like you fly by the seat of your pants that you got to make your adjustments during timeout once you figure out what the other coach is doing to break this game down. So it, it's going to be very different this year for everybody. Uh, I think having that depth and then being able to win on the road a fair percentage is going to be the difference in the year. This was a tight one tonight, um, closer than yesterday, but you had 20-plus uh, turnovers in both games. Uh, talk about your defensive effort. Uh, how good was that effort during this weekend? I don't know if um, if, if, if even Delta State or thought they were going to come over here and go 0-2. We, we weren't there offensively tonight. It just wasn't clicking for us. We just couldn't find the whole night any type of rhythm. I think Delta State had a tremendous amount to do with that. Craig made some great adjustments which you knew he was going to. But the defense, to hold somebody under 50 points, I think we held them to 54 last night, I think it's something like that, and then 47 or whatever it was tonight, that's that's pretty incredible. That's what kept us in the game and gave us, all we're asking is our defense is to put us in, in a uh, position to be able to finish the game, and I thought they did that both days. So we've been spending a tremendous amount of time on that. With Taja and Bria both in foul trouble tonight, how did you think your team responded to um, to your better players not being on the court a lot. Well, that's that's what's even more remarkable. You know, that defense, as we knew, because right now we feel like we're about six deep, that can come in and give us just quality minutes. And so we knew that we were going to have to be able to rotate them in different positions, uh, but play maybe a little bit more zone, do some things, and, and, and the type of defense that we're playing this year, kind of throwing different looks at people, trying to keep them on their heels a little bit, guessing what we're doing, would buy some time in case that did happen, because you got to admit, both of them are, are foul prone uh, if you followed them through the year. So we had to make sure that we were prepared for that. Tonight we were very, very fortunate. Other people stood up, uh, picked their game up. But at one point I looked on the bench, we had four starters sitting out with two and three fouls, you know, that in the first half I'm talking about. Uh, that's pretty incredible, especially Taysha being one of those. But to be able to put them back in and then not foul out says a lot about their maturity uh, as they've come along each year. So I'm proud of them for that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Nick.